Club. So we're here at the Embedded World 2025. And uh, hi. Hi. How are you? Welcome uh, to the Torad Expos. Here we have a demo from our uh, customer, uh, Skevo, showing the wheelchair which can go up and down the stairs. It's getting tens of millions of views, right? It's a uh, very big YouTube hit. Yeah, it's very, very popular because, of course, it's very, very nice if you're in a wheelchair and you can actually go up. So how is it going with the, with the company? We are doing good. We are expanding our market in, the, in these days. We have recently entered the Mexican market as well. So we are a little company which is growing and we, we like to make people life better. So we are on it. I hope you can make enough of these. Uh, I hope the, the quantity could be going up. Are you helping these guys like make millions of them? Uh, yeah, we are definitely helping them. We are helping them so they can develop uh, faster. We are helping them to focus on their keysing, which is of course the control, the mechatronics and all of that and the basic Linux, the basic compute is provided by, uh, by Toradex. All right. What are the other highlights you want to show here at the okay. booth? So here we have our AI corner a little bit, uh, where we show off uh, our TI-based uh, module. And uh, Bruno is our AI specialist, and maybe you can talk a little bit uh, about the AM69 here. Yes, on this demo, we are showing uh, eight cameras being captured simultaneously with a single board. And you can see that there are many AI models being run on them at the same time. Right. This leverages the four NPUs, so the four neural processing units that we have on this Aquila AM69 platform. Uh, uh, How is the performance? It's great. As you can see from the graphs here, we are not even using them all the way uh, over. So there is still room to use more, um, to use these NPUs more for even heavier applications. And what is the a a AI zone, AU zone? Yeah. AU zone is actually the demo that we have up here using the Verdi IMX810 Plus, and this is a semantic segmentation task. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about Ozone, this is a real product, and it's actually deployed on container boats with very ruggedized environment, with salt water and all of that. And the camera looks out over the ocean and detects trash. So they're mapping out uh, the trash patch. It's called Ocean Cleanup, the company who, who runs that. So it's so a real deployed AI application for a good purpose. So your company is really deploying really cool stuff around the world now? Huh? Yeah, very cool. And it's all managed with Horizon. So Horizon is a very secure way how they can update uh, this like these products which are deployed all over the world. Good. Uh, maybe we can uh, continue here. Uh, one of our kind of fun demos uh, is our uh, bots. Uh, we call it T-Bot. And they demonstrate the heterogeneous multi-core, where you have, uh, you have Cortex-A cores running Linux, here with our partner Crank. And then we have an M core, which uh, do the balancing. So even the Linux crashes, the, the robots would continue balancing it. So what do people usually talk about here? Yeah, so what are the most common questions people ask here? Yes, so basically about the software stack, how can you develop such a thing like Fastly? And there I can talk a, a lot about how the Horizon Container approach facilitates. So this robot was developed by multiple teams that uh, spread across the globe. We have uh, Crank developing the UI. We have different teams doing the artificial intelligence. We have uh, the hard acceleration for cameras for an inference and we could uh, glue together containers easily and fastly. Yes. Uh, what is on the screen? Yes, so right now we have like reverted displays, it's our partner, and we have like rich UI interfaces developed by Crank. So we can play games with it, we can uh, put interactions about like how it can disturb this position. So it's nice to be, I would say, uh, interacting with the, the you, role robot. You can yes. kick the robot. You could kick, but I think punching to be nicer, like like that. <laughs> yeah, and we also show the fleet management. So all these robots are connected to our Horizon cloud. So we can see the voltage, we can see the temperature, and of course we can deploy updates. 
which was very useful because this is just a demo. Yeah. And of course, like always at the show, you do last minute changes and we have about 10 of this. We also have deployed on other uh, parts at the Embedded World. So uh, Danilo could basically, with a press of a button, get them all to the latest state. I see some guy uh, pull, pulling a cable. Yeah, so this is one of our other demos uh, with our uh, customer 1080T Sprint and is a fitness uh, equipment. May maybe we can show it here with our product manager, uh, Momo. So uh, let's see. Yeah, let's show on, how. Push, push. Yeah. So this could be okay. for real pro athletes. I I exactly. He's a pro athlete, yeah. right? Oh, 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 no, wait, that's too far. Okay. <laughs> and what, what do we see here? Uh. So this is the 1080 Sprint. It's a high-performance uh, fitness machine that's used for running out to towards the machine, so you can increase the uh, speed or strength. Basically. Yeah, and you can use it for sprinting, but you also can use it for weight training. You can emulate weights. You can emulate elastic bands. Uh, all of that. Also here, of course, the Toradex module and Toradex software. Okay, yeah, you give you another feel, try. Uh, pull. What did you feel? Yeah, you feel a pull. It's really hard when you start in the beginning, but then once you get running, it's really, uh, it's really nice. So the guys who have this uh, win all the medals, or what's the point? Um, our guys are pretty good. Yeah. So it, it's used right at the Olympics. Uh, there are many people use that. NFL player use that, or uh, you know, U.S. colleges which really focusing on uh, on sports. I, I think it's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, we only do show. that for okay, you. This was not our regular video. demo. That's this just was, for me. This was, uh, cool. It's the end of the show. You know, there are not so yeah. many people anymore, so we give cool. you an extra That's amazing. Show. Okay, yeah. let's check the next. Good. Thing yeah, so, so the next maybe we can talk here is really about the EU Cyber Resilient Act. This got into force and it will be soon, there will be very heavy penalties. And 15 million is where it starts. It can go much, much higher. And Toradex helps with secure boot, with vulnerability monitoring, and so on. So we see a lot of demand for that on our own hardware, but also on other hardware. Maybe we can show you here a so little bit. So it's kind of like a Toradex comp uh, comp uh, obligatory regulation? No, I mean, it's from the EU, of course. And it's a Linux, right? From our side, it's just regular uh, Linux with Yocto, but we extend it to help people to easier comply with the, with the EU Cyber Resilient Act. And we have here uh, Leon from our team. Hello. And he can show you one of our newer features, how you can analyze CVs and what you're already doing on, on, on this part. Yeah, so we're basically, <laughs> Momo still jumping around. Yeah. We are doing analysis of CV analysis for Horizon releases. So the idea is that we take on the work of analyzing and qualifying each of the CVEs for Horizon specifically, so our customers doesn't have to. So uh, essentially, the EU Cyber Resilience Act uh, requires that people who have products with digital elements, it requires so that they don't put these products onto the market with known exploitable vulnerabilities. And we are guaranteeing that Horizon won't have any because we are doing the qualification and giving this information for our customers without any strings attached. It's completely open standards that we're using and it's pretty nice. So 80, 90% of the work, it's completely done by Horizon. Yeah, and we really we have our security expert go over all the, the CVs you cannot automatic filter out, uh, go over it and tell you do you need to worry or not because there is a lot of false positive and most of the CVs are actually not exploitable. Exactly. But this is not always clear, you need to have a lot of knowledge and we do that and we share this data in a shareable SBOM so our customer can import that in their own tools if they like. And what's the CV? A CVE, I don't know even what it knows. It's a vulnerability. Uh, it's no. common vulnerability exposure. So it's basically a system to analyze and give individual IDs to vulnerabilities. It's uh, the standard system the, the whole software industry uses. Yeah, and, uh, and a lot of people are trying out the chair at your booth. It's like, a, it's like a, what do you call it? A, an amazing experience. Uh, so many people also yeah. getting. I also like to highlight uh, the collaboration with Texas Instrument, so they also really see the value on the security stuff we do, on the easy enablement uh, which Horizon gives, which also helps you a lot to get started, so you really can focus on your product and don't need to worry about the OS. So now that's very new, 
We support many of the TI starter kit, like here in AM62, we have AM62P and many more uh, TI-based starter kits. We support and many will come in the future. Nice. Good. Then, uh, yeah, let's maybe move to our uh, wall of ports. Of course, there's a lot of more demos. Um, but may maybe let's let's go here. Is it, is it the biggest booth ever? No, it's actually we even had Beezer before COVID, but you know, after COVID we, we went here a little bit uh, uh, smaller. But I think it's still a very nice uh, thing. Yeah, so here you can, for example, see the AM69. That's the product that Bruno showed before with the AI, AI performance. And this is uh, inside the 1080 P motion. It's a you know, development board, uh, but you can see here how they did it, it's Toradex module, and then our customer 1080 motion here designed their own carrier board. And the nice thing is they do not need to start from scratch. They can use one of our boards we already have as a, as a starting point. And then uh, Peter here actually shows uh, our Altium design files. So they just start there and then, you know, customize from there. So you're very, very fast. Also, all our design are already validated. So it's very low risk to do a, a development. So what do we see here right now? Yeah. Uh, we see just the uh, design files that you can freely download from our website of one of our carrier boards. It is the Mallow carrier board, one that can be used for the Verdin family. And you just download the files. You can uh, actually see what we have done. Uh, you can take it and modify it according to your needs. Uh. And the cool thing is we really we produce this board, so you can buy the board, so you know all the footprints, everything is validated and works, right? And you can get everything, the complete bomb manufacturing files, and you can manufacture yourself, you can modify, uh, it's very popular. Is it possible to use AI to design boards? Uh, so far we haven't used that, and I hope it will still take a while until AI will take over my job, so. <laughs> Maybe it makes you superhuman to like make faster, Maybe. better. Maybe, but I'm kind of really enjoying layouting and uh, I uh, think, yeah, in a couple of years, probably AI will be better in layouting than humans are. But I hope it will still take a couple of years until that because I really enjoyed it. It's such a nice puzzle. It looks book. so cool. It looks so smooth and high quality, the, yeah, the yeah. rendering right now. Yes, that's just uh, that's what Altium's offers here. Uh, Good. All right. Good, great. And then Thank maybe you. we can have a look at our wall of ports. Um, so here you can see our lineup of our latest system on modules. We simplified it so it's not all of them. And they are, you know, in a nice way where you see a little bit price performance. And uh, one line is a family. So for example, here our Verdin family and all modules are pin compatible. So you can choose, do I need an MPU, do I need a 3D GPU, more, less RAM, more cores, less core. You can seamlessly scale. And then also because our software that also works on the software side. So you can even move from a TI to an NXP to a TI again. Uh, so that, that's all open. So when it's on one line, it's pin it, compatible. Exactly. It's pin co so we have here the Verdin family. And then this is something brand new. So Toradex software and Toradex quality is now available on Smart. And here the iMix 8 and Plus, you really, if you already have a Smart design and you're maybe not so happy with the software or the quality, you can now get the iMix 8 and Plus and you can replace it and you can get advantage of Torizon, of the CRA compliance and all of that. And then here the Aquila, this is the high performance module where we saw a lot of the AI. So the iMix 9.5 and then the, the 69. Where is it going? Yeah, it's, going? it's even go higher. So we didn't announce that yet, but we even uh, want to go higher. I, AI stuff maybe. Yeah, see. I mean, uh, here on the high end, we definitely have AI, but we even have ha AI on some of the lower end module because we can heavily uh, optimize the models uh, to also run there. What's the gray line? Uh, the gray line that says a new thing, not announced models yet. Yeah, this one. But uh, this gray, uh -huh, you, yeah, this is the Colibri. This is our first family of products. Uh, launch about That's 18 years ago, thinking. yeah, yeah, and we still do that. By the way, we still do Windows C updates for some of this model. So we say we support our models for more than the lifetime. So with the CRA, we probably go to 15, 20 years of software support, and we have proven track record on that. 
but hopefully people live longer than 15, 20 years. Yeah, lifetime, no, compa- you mean something else? Yeah, I mean a lifetime of the product, right? You How don't long support you get the boards updates? for 80 to 100 years, no? Uh, yeah, no, no. Not yet. But uh, here also the IMX95, which we were the first uh, company outside of NXP providing boards. So we were in the very, very early access. We provide that now in three different form factors. So heavily investing here in IMX95, which we think it's a great chip, a little bit on the higher end, really great neural network acceleration, great graphics. Uh, Which great one is the most chips. popular? Currently, I think IMX8 M Plus and AM62 is our high runner uh, at the moment for new project. And then also, I mean, Torex is really, really famous for system on modules, but you can also use our boards you see at Peter's desk which are fully open and you can man- manufacture yourself. But you can take this and go directly into volume. So you basically have a single board computer with the additional advantage that you can scale. So if you, for example, have the Wordin family, you can plug in any Wordin module. So you can easily scale. New, we also have enclosures. So you can really put it deployed and then together with Horizon, you can just add your application. The, the software support, the patching, everything is, is taken care of. And we also support customizations. So if you need, you say you want to customize that, of course you can do it yourself. Where, you know, we have a lot of documentation. We can help you, so Toradex, and we have a really good partner ecosystem of a lot of partners who can modify that, they can manufacture it for you and make it so it fits your application. And uh, how how fast is the memory bandwidth or the data going through your uh, design? It it really uh, depends, but especially our Aquila, we have a a lot of the latest PCIe interfaces, so they can go, go big. And we have up to 400 pins uh, we can have on our Aquila, that's a smart. Uh, here we demo that our module actually run on other boards, that's not Toradex boards. We just show it the pin compatibility. Take off from there and put it uh, there. Yeah. I, yeah uh, can fine. you demo that? Yeah. So, so it's possible to put it from there to one of the other ones? Yes, yeah. sure. But just unplug it. Which one do you want to go? Uh, yeah, let's just. Go to this. Let's okay. go to this one. Yeah. Um, let me see where the. Oh, where is it? Where's this? Uh, I see one down there. Ah, here. Oh, here. Yeah. All right. Let's put that on. Yeah. Uh, so Peter is also not the demo uh, person here. Yeah. I just, this is a challenge. But it's cool to see that you just plug it into another board and then boom, it might just boot. All right. That's a question of power pin. Power. And then it'll just boot. It doesn't matter which, um, what do you call it, um, baseboard you have, uh, yeah. it'll just boot. Well, yeah. so, so as long as uh, it uses the standard interfaces uh, of Smart, yes. Yeah. It works. So, so here really the idea is to show that if you already have uh, your own port and you want to profit from our quality, from our software support, it's very easy to, to migrate, right? And of course, this is an easy use case, a more complex use case. We are very happy to talk to you and look over the pin out and make sure uh, the, the transition is as smooth as possible. Cool. So it's a great show for you. Yeah, it was very good. I mean, we are ramping down, right? So now we have a lot of space to walk around. Yesterday, you could not walk through here, uh, but it was a very uh, great three days. And, you know, there will be a lot of follow-up and a lot of to-dos we will have to do in the next days.